Would you like to animate a project with OpenTunes and are interested in the possible workflow? Well here's part 3 of my 4 part series and today we'll be finishing the animation with Clean Up and Ink and Paint. Hello ladies and gents and welcome to part 3 of my animation process series. In the first two parts I covered putting the story together, building up a storyboard and transferring that to an animatic to set out the basic timing. Then I drew out the rough animation, detailing the difference between extremes, keyframes, breakdowns and in-betweens, showing how you can add them using OpenTunes. You can see links to these in the description below. Today we'll take that rough animation and complete it by cleaning up the animation, drawing clean vector lines and colouring them in. As with all my videos, there are time codes in the description below, so you can jump directly to the relevant section. And I'd like to mention that with this series, I'm not a professional animator, but a keen amateur, and I'm just sharing one way that the traditional animation process can be accomplished with open tunes. So without any further ado, let's get started. So first, we'll clean up the animation. Here's the animation running. Clean up involves what's called lockdown or tie down to make sure your character is on model and doesn't lose or gain volume. This animation is fairly clean as I like to delete my guidelines as I go, so I wouldn't necessarily do anything more to it but to go direct to drawing the neat lines. But if you use lots of guides or write notes on the animation layer, here's how you do it. Ok, so how we start is we'd add a new raster level and we'll call this clean up. OK, I'll name the layer name as well. There we go. OK, so clean up just involves, as it sounds, drawing a cleaned up version of the animation. So you'd go frame by frame, drawing an eaten version of each character, making sure that the character stays on model and doesn't gain or lose volume. It's also a good time to make sure that any secondary action or follow through works smoothly. So in this instance for the flower sack, we take a look at the tassels to make sure all four corners are moving in the right directions. So as the flower sack jumps up, we want to make sure the tassels are following behind until it reaches the peak and then they catch up and then when the sack falls, the tassels are above it coming downwards. OK, so let's start. So I'll select the pencil brush and on the rough layer, I'll change the filter to change the colour and then we can see exactly where we've drawn. That's it. So if we turn the rough sack layer off, we'll see just the cleanup image. Good. But as I don't want to draw each frame separately, what I'm going to do is take a copy of the rough sack layer so I can edit on the copied layer but still have the rough layer beneath it. So to do that, all you need to do is highlight all of the cells. So select the first cell by clicking on it. Move to the final frame. Hold shift and select it. And then go to the cells menu and choose clone. It'll ask for a new layer name and it suggests one for you already. So I'll call this Clean Up Copy. OK. And it inserts it as a new layer. So we'll rename the layer so we recognise it. Clean Up Copy. OK. And if I hide the previous Clean Up layer, so now as I look through each drawing, if there's a problem, I can edit the copied version and leave the rough version in its place. So the first thing we'll do is we'll lock the rough layer by pressing the button below the padlock mark. And that means we can't accidentally edit the wrong layer. So for instance, in the first frame, if I decide that the right hand foot is too large compared to the left, I can erase that. And then take a brush, choose a pencil, and then draw in... the new version. As I change between the two views of each version, you can see the difference. OK, so I'll go through the animation now, making any adjustments, and I'll be back shortly. OK, 
Okay, so I've just stopped here to show a typical example of what you might like to clean up. So you can see I've still got some guide circles from where I first drew them to guide the size of the flower sack. I mostly remove these once I've drawn the outline because they just get in the way of the view of the animation. But if you'd like to keep your guides in your rough animation, then the cleanup phase is perhaps more important to do. So I'll just get rid of those. If I hide the rough layer first, and I can see exactly what I'm erasing. Okay, so you can also see the outside line is quite rough and messy, so I cleaned this up as well while I was going through. Okay, so that's slightly neater, so that'll make it easier later for tracing the line. But also, of course, you might have notes at the side of your drawings, or markers, or hand-drawn guides of showing exactly the direction things should be moving, or even timing diagrams. And it's at this stage by creating a cleanup layer that you get rid of all of these distractions. So I'll just get rid of those from here now. So that when you play your animation and add the neat lines later, you can see exactly where you need to draw. So I'll just go ahead and clean up the rest of the animation. Okay, that looks better. So I've neatened up the animation. I've drawn the sack more on model. I've checked his volume. I've made sure the tassels are facing the right direction each time. And I've got a neater line to draw the vector lines on next. So let's move to the inking stage. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the background in. And for that I need a vector layer. So I'll choose the left hand icon here to add a vector layer. And I'll give it a name. Neat background. OK, and I'll rename the layer title, and let's move this to the top. OK, so firstly I'll draw in the background using the brush. So I'll set the size here to be 2 minimum and 2 maximum, so the line size doesn't change. I'll leave the accuracy at 100. And smoothness, I'll, I'll leave it on 15 or so. And the rest of the settings I won't change. So I'll just draw the basics of the background. Okay, so that'll be for the background for now. You'll notice that I enclosed a lot of the areas outside of the field view with an extra line. And this is so that later I can use the fill tool to enclose the whole area in one colour. So now let's add a vector layer for the flower sack animation. And again we'll rename the layer. And now I've got this layer, I can simplify the timeline view by hiding the layers I don't use. So all you need to do is highlight the layer header, right click and choose Fold Column. You can click it to reshow any time you like. And again refold by right clicking it and choosing Fold Column. So I'll just hide the rest apart from the cleanup copy of the flower sack. I'll turn off the background first so I don't see the hand drawn animatic background. So I'll use two tools to draw the flower sack with. The brush tool here. And to keep a consistent size, I'll set the minimum and maximum sizes to be the same. I'll leave the accuracy on 100 and I'll leave the smoothness quite low on about 15 or so. Now what the smoothness does, you'll see it affects the number of points that's drawn in a line as you wobble your pen. So if you make the smoothness higher and then draw the same wobbly line, you'll see it comes out much smoother. And the line lags behind where the pen moves. And the higher the number, the more the lag. So if we reduce it down and then try again, the line is drawn quite close to where the pen is with only a small delay, but it makes a much smoother line. And around 15 works for me. And if you take a look at the actual vector line it creates by using the control point editor, you'll see that without any smoothing, there's a lot of separate control points along this line compared to the other lines. 
and the more points on the line that there are, the more wobble it shows. And also during an animation, the more work that the system has to do to draw each line in each frame. So the fewer the points, the smoother the lines are, and the less work your computer has to do, so it'll render your animation much quicker. OK, so that's the brush tool. So if I take those lines off, and the second tool I'll be using is the geometry tool, which is this one here. So I'll be using two options in this tool, and inside the shape area here, you can select them. I'll be using the line and the arc. So if I choose the line first, so if I reduce the size of the pen first, OK. And the way this works is you click at the start point, drag the mouse, and at the point you release, then it draws the line. So click, drag, and release. Click, drag, and release. And you might think this is no use for the flower sack as it's mainly made up of curves. But what you can then do is go to the control point editor, and you can select the line and then drag it to bend it. So you select and drag, select and then drag. And that gives you a nice curve. And the benefit of using the geometry's line tool instead of the brush tool is it only ever creates two control points, one at either end with a handle to affect the curve. So as well as dragging from the center of the line to decide where the curve goes, you can use these two control handles to change the curve. The second option I'll use in the geometry tools is the arc. If you select the arc tool, so it's very similar to the line. So you click the first point and you get a line attached. You click the end point and that ends the line. And then you've got this elastic band feature that allows you to bend the line in the same movement. So it's just a shortcut for adding a line and then changing it later. So this is the tool I'll be using most often, at least for the main points of the sack. For the tassels, I'll still be using the brush tool as you get more flexibility with this. OK, so I'll go ahead and start inking all of my lines, and I'll see you in a short while. OK, so I've put the basic lines down for the sack. So what I need to do now is to adjust them so they fit neater. And there's two tools you use for this. The first is the main selection tool. And if you select that and select on an object, you can then drag it and replace it to where you need. Or you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge it by a small portion at a time. You can also resize the lines either by selecting on a line and holding shift to select further lines and then using the drag handles in the corner to make them smaller and larger or wider or taller. Or you can click and drag over the lines and with the rectangular tool selected if you click and drag to the right as you go down, you select the lines as they get closed by the rectangle. You can see them being selected one by one here. Or if you click and drag to the left, they get selected as they're first touched by the selection rectangle. Both can be handy in different situations. And again, once it's selected, you can resize your object in any of the four directions. Or you can rotate it by hovering near one of the corners and clicking and dragging. Or you can make the lines thicker or thinner by going over the line at the bottom right and then clicking and dragging down to make it thinner or up to make them fatter. And the final way to edit a line, which I'll be doing most often, is with the control point editor. So select that and then you can select an individual line and move either one of the points to where it needs to be or adjust the curve handle to change the curve of the line. So I'll just change a few of these lines to neaten up the flower sack in this frame. Okay, so that's those lines neater, so they meet better. Now I've noticed that when I drew the tassels using the brush tool, the ends of the lines are square instead of round, same as the ones drawn by the arc and line tools. So we can fix this on the lines already drawn by using the selection tool, select each line, and you'll see the miter option here, and currently it's got a square end. So if we open that up, we can choose the round end. And it's as simple as that. So I'll just change the other four. And I've changed the default on the brush tool by selecting the brush tool and at the right hand side here you see where it's got the square end mitre. So we'll change that to round for next time. Okay, so I'll just draw the rest of the frames in now. 
and I'll be back a little later. So here you can see we draw the little puffs of smoke from when the flower sack lands. I draw these on a separate vector layer so they don't interfere with the timing of the sack itself. And they just help to emphasise the weight of the sack as it lands. I start off by copying the sketch from the cleaned up layer, but then end up just drawing them by eye. Ok so that's the inking done, and here's the final inked animation. So I think that's come out ok. So it's time to colour it in. I'm going to colour in the flower sack and background using vector fills, but there are sometimes issues with vector fills, so we'll see how it goes for this animation. But for simple shapes, the vector fill works just fine. However, sometimes there are problems when it just refuses to colour in a filled section. So a better way is to use raster fills. There's a good explanation of this technique by Orphan Last, who has a tutorial detailing it. I'll add a link to it in the description below. It involves creating a raster level by copying your vector level and then colouring it in directly on the raster level. So I'll start off by painting the background. I'll use the gradient brush that I detailed in another video. I'll add a link to that in the card above and in the description. But basically it involves creating a fill, using it and then changing it to a gradient colour afterwards. So I'll go ahead with that. Ok so that's the background coloured in, now I'll just go ahead and colour in the flower sack. Ok so that's the colouring complete, let's take a look at that. So what I'll do, I'll click the button here at the top of the table to show just the camera, so that blocks off any excess colouring that bleeds out of the frame. So let's see how that looks. Good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Ok, we'll take a look at a full preview using the menu item. Okay, let's make this slightly larger. And then fit it to the window. There we go. Let's take a look. Good, so that's the animation complete. If you like this video, please like and share to help the channel. And comment below if you have any questions or requests for other tutorials. And remember to subscribe to be reminded of future tutorials, including next week's, when I'll be introducing you to some of the effects in OpenTunes and adding some to finish off the animation. And I'll see you with that next Friday. And that's a guarantee.